Okie dokie dokie. Let's get started here. So today's uh, video, stream, whatever you want to call it, is going to be on a singular precise topic. So we're going to do a new player guide today. Uh, that's the first thing. Um, and today we're going to be talking about Zaws. Uh, and you might be wondering, well, why are we talking about Zaws? A lot of older players probably don't even really consider Zaws anymore. Uh, and that's because right now, uh, with the current um, way the game's handled, um, melee weapons are your bread and butter. They're the things that you're going to do the most damage with. Um, they're going to be the thing that carries you through the majority of the game. Um, and having a really good one really early on is going to make the game a lot easier for you to manage. Uh, and Zaws are a customizable, um, uh, they're, uh, I guess they're more modular. Um, they're modular, they can have arcanes attached to them, they don't really have any good arcanes. Uh, ignore him, he's... He will not be here very long. Um, <laughs> uh, they um, get a lot of really good benefits that other melee weapons don't get. So I figured, hey, uh, let's try and look at a Zaw as a new player weapon. So I've kind of been working with this idea. I've been toying this this thing for, I want to say, almost a year now, if not more. Um, Maybe since the pandemic, now I think about it. But anyway, um, I've been working on this for a little bit of time. I kind of uh, put it to pasture for a little bit because I figured, uh, well, this wouldn't really be feasible for a new player to do, but I just stayed up till midnight last night working on a spreadsheet. Um, and I figured out that, yeah, you can actually make a saw on your basically first day of Warframe, if not um, second day. So let's kind of talk about what's going to happen here. We're going to go see Hawk. Hawk's one of my favorite uh, Austrians. <laughs> okay. So let's dial the clock back, and I may even have footage of me going to see this for the first time on stream. Um, I went and I was running around, and I talked to Hawk, and I looked at this menu, and I did this, and I played around with it, and I realized, holy crap, I have no idea what I'm doing. I had all these numbers thrown at me, I went back, I went to the, the browse wares, and I just saw all of this stuff, and I just decided right there and there, it's like, okay, I'm not even going to bother with this, I'm not going to touch it until I know what I'm doing, and I'm pretty sure my very first Zaw was actually from Plague Star. And I was like, Mar like Master Rank 10 with my first Prime Frame. And it took me forever to get back to these things. And honestly, back then, before they nerfed Condition Overload, it was a pretty good stat stick I made. I think it was like a Plague Kiwar or something. Um, we can go look at that later. It's kind of, it's just it's taking up space my inventory these days. It's been mothballed for a very long time. But last, I, this whole like process I've been going through, I've kind of realized that it's it's not really uh, true that you can actually do something with this, not just um, being unranked for the Austrian, but being, you know, mastery rank one or two, or, you know, starting your first couple days of Warframe. So I'm going to kind of go through and talk about that. I'm going to talk about what we're looking at and why some things aren't going to work. Um... And then we will kind of dig more into what exactly you can do with a Zaw. Okay, let me double check something really fast. I want to make sure my microphone's actually on, because my... Well, that's not right. Um, I've had this setting turned off before. microphone. Okay, good. Yeah, I think we're good. Alright, just want to double check to make sure that box was checked so I'm not just talking to myself again. Um, okay, so 
there is a lot to look at. And I, what I wish I could do was do this from a new player perspective so that you could see it. Um, that would take me a little more time. And I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be able to use my same PlayStation account. It might be one per customer with my Twitch. So we're just going to have to deal with the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm already kin uh, and can get everything. But as a new player and you're level zero, basically you're an outworlder, you're uh, the lowest rank for Austrian, you've just showed up basically. This is kinda, let me, let me dial back here really fast. Um, this guide, I'm not saying this is the only way to succeed in Warframe, I'm not saying my way is right and everyone else sucks eggs. I'm saying this might be something for you to consider for a nice melee weapon to get you through the majority of the first part of the game. You know, that's it. Uh, if you've already got, like, rank 3 with the Austron, that's fine. If you already have, like, the rest of this stuff opened up, that's fine, too. I'm not saying don't use it. I'm just looking at what a brand new player who's first time on Cetus and they've just done the bounty, like, the very first mission for um, Kanzu. And they're just kind of doodling around the, the village, not really sure what they're looking at. So that's really where we're sitting right here. Um... So everything up to the dock room here, you can get. Uh, if you're not aware of how purchasing things... Whoop, hold on. I don't know what that was. I thought someone was knocking on my back door. Okay. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, you're not going to buy these with credits, which is kind of a weird concept, right? Like, I have 32,000 or 327,000 credits. I can't use any of them to buy this. I need to use the standing, which you can kind of see the, I guess, trapezoid little shape next to the number, the thousand. It's the same as this one right here, right? That means you're using this value to buy these things. And these are just the blueprint. So you're going to buy the blueprint, take them to your foundry, build them, and then bring them back so Hawk can assemble them. Um, and I've already kind of gone through this process. I'll show you a little bit more what we're doing here. I'm not sure if I have anything else made. I might buy... Yeah, I might just buy some more and do this for you really fast. So you can kind of see that there, and then we can get and I think we're do I have a handle? Let's just take the pay game. Eh? Okay. Oh, hold on. Okay. We'll see. Okay, so you're sitting here. These are the parts you need for your Zoss. Now, you're not going to be able... You can buy all of these up like at rank zero. You can buy any of these you want but you're not going to be able to make them all yet. There are some you can, and we're going to talk about those in a second, but some of these are just going to be locked out for a significant portion of the game for one reason or another. Um, so let's go back here. 
and this is where you essentially assemble it. So you've bought your blueprint with the standing, you've taken it to your foundry, you've made it in your foundry, and they only take an hour. Honestly, one of the nice things about Azal is you're going to be basically ready in about three hours if you have everything put together at once. Um, at least, uh, and that's compared to like, say, uh, um, any other weapons, usually like 12 hours. So you're going to select your pieces, like so, like I already have a battle made, and a Jai, and a Laka. And your Zaw is now made. Just like that. And this one is a dagger, as you can see down here, and there are the stats for it. Um, we'll talk about the stats here shortly and why I'm choosing one over the other. And then use hit build. And you're good. Just like that. Now, let's go back really fast. Talk about some other things we need to consider here. So, the speed at which you're going to be able to finish this all and um, make it as useful as any other weapon is not really dependent on the Zaw or your leveling of it, but actually how fast you can level up the Ostron. So, with every other weapon besides these module ones, besides the Zaws, um, you're going to get it up to rank 30, and then it's done. And you can put in a Catalyst, you can put in a Forma and Forma It, and change the polarities. You can put in a, a uh, focus lens uh, and get some extra focus for your schooling. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. You can't do that quite yet with a Zaw. With a Zaw, you have to guild it first. And gilding's not actually open until uh, I believe it's level 3 with the Ostrin. So you're going to have to eventually, if you want to use this saw, you're going to have to come back around to it and um, level the Ostrin a few times. Honestly, it's not necessary, but if you want to get all like the most bang for your buck out of this thing, which really would be a good idea, you are going to have to come back around. Now, we can talk about the Ostrin today too. They're not as bad as you think. You probably don't actually need to do the bounties if you don't want to. Unless you like want Gara, unless you want the rewards that you can get, so they have some really nice stuff. Honestly, doing the bounties isn't bad, but I could definitely, I definitely remember struggling with them as a new player. I can see it as something that might be intimidating. So you're not required at any point with this process to go and do bounties. All right, I want to make that clear. Okay, so you're gonna name a saw, and you're going to. Um, gain a few things and we'll talk about that here as soon as we're finished with that um, uh, let's go back to this menu here I like this blueprint menu better okay so we saw we used a handle a blade and a link I'm not sure why the links are on there they don't really seem to serve a purpose besides a third part that you need um, and what you choose changes um, the stats on your weapon. So uh, we can kind of see that when we forge. Yeah, Hawk's going to have to be patient with me today. Alright, so let's go back to that Bala I just made. We're going to take a Bala, we're going to take a Peye, and we're going to take a Jai. I don't know why this is only a different word. Okay. There's the exact same knife we just made, right? Now we're going to change some pieces. Let's change the Bala to the Dacrum. It changed the type of weapon, so instead of a dagger, now we have a scythe. You can see that some of the stats have improved, some of the stats have gone down. The blades are going to determine what kind of damage you do, and this is kind of important for later. So. The Jai was a very mostly puncture-based weapon. Now we're looking at more slash damage, right? Right there. If we go to the Crunch. This is an impact weapon. You can also notice it's changed our uh, swing speed, too. Follow-through has gone down, but uh, most of our other stats range have gone up. This is a machete, somehow. 
I'm not entirely sure. If you like uh, Indian War Clubs, this is probably one you're going to be eyeballing because it's a beautiful weapon right here. Okay, so maybe thinking, all right, that's what the blade can do. What if it we change the grip? So let's change this from a, uh, a Peye to a Crustar. Now we have a polearm. Now it's no longer a sword or a machete, it is a longer weapon with a much longer swing time, but much higher damage than before, right? Just like that. And then we can also change our link. Okay, so we have a Jai on there now. If we go with the Ruhang, we're going to drop that uh, swing speed a lot, but bring our damage up by a good amount. So you can kind of see how these work. So just play around with it a little bit. Um, there are a whole bunch of different configurations you can do. Um, but now let's talk about what's actually within your realm of possibilities. Because you have a lot of possibilities, but not everything can be built. Um, let's talk about that dock room we were just talking about. Here you can see the pieces you're going to need. Um, some of these things are things that you can go out and find on Cetus or on the excuse me, the plains of Eidolon. And I'm even gonna go out and show you where some of these things are. Some of these things are not. Um and we'll go take a look at the minerals and the fishing here in a second here. So let's start with the Paya. This is one of the ones you can get. Iridite is everywhere on planes. You can find it anywhere. Fish oil is a uh, byproduct of when you, um, what is it, I think clean fish, uh, what's the word they use, I'm, th I'm forgetting the vernacular, um, but whatever you do to disassemble the fish, uh, to get the parts, fish oil is one of the ones you get a lot, uh, pyrotic alloy, um, is a mineral, so you're going to mine this from the plains, and then you're going to buy the blueprint to refine it into pyrotic alloy. Pyrotic alloy is going to take its own requirements, but it's nothing you can't find. We'll talk about those when we go talk to Old Man Sumac. And then alloy plate is actually a resource. You're not going to find it on Earth, but I think it's on Venus or Mercury. It's something pretty early on. It's nothing you have to worry about there. Um, meanwhile, we're going to talk about the Cicala. So the Cicala is a little bit different. Grokadrule, again, something that's very common on the plains. It's in uh, containers in granier uh, uh, emplacements, in forts. Uh, it's super easy to find. Fish oil, pyrotic, we've already talked about. But salvage, so 900 salvage, to me, is not a huge deal at all because I've been to Mars all the time, right? Uh, fucking course. All right, hold on a second here. All right, well, we tried that. Anyway. Um, salvage for a new player is not going to be immediate. Once you get the Mars, you're going to be drowning in the stuff, but before you get the Mars, you're only going to get a little bit, I believe, from a few junctions and not much else. So you're not really going to want to spend it here. You're going to want to be sparse with that. So I've kind of put the Cicala on like a kind of a yellow uh, track meaning that it's possible but it's not the most feasible and probably not going to be able to do this one day one. Um, Nissle pods again something that's everywhere I'll show you exactly where they pop up um, on the plains it's just a plant that grows fish oil again um, cryotic is what you get from naturally just get from excavation so with this one if you wanted 750 cryotic you'd have to uh, do eight excavators, not eight excavator missions, just have eight excavators survive until you got 800 or 750. So that's not the worst thing in the world. For a new player, it might be kind of challenging to get to eight, so you might be just safer doing four and four. But anyway, you're going to get Craddock if you're going to do excavations. I recommend doing excavations. They're a very relaxed, low key um, mission type. You, you can't fail them, essentially. That's why I like them. Um, but copyright is tricky. It's actually going to be available at rank 2 with the Austrians. You're going to get that blueprint to refine it. You can go out and mine it, yeah, but you can't refine it until you get that blueprint, and you can't get the blueprint until you're rank 2, which might take more time. So I'm not putting that one on there. 
Um, Jayap, I want you to be careful with these because you can see I've got all the little boxes checked for me. They're not going to be for everybody. Maprico is, again, a plant that grows on the plains. Super common. Not as common as the other ones, but it's still pretty easy to find. It's just a shiny tree. Fish oil, again. Rubico, Rubido, you're going to find everywhere on Earth. Um, it's one of the most common resources, just period. Um, so that's not an issue, but fair steel alloy is. This is the one I believe it's actually, it's either rank 2 or rank 3. Uh, it's another one that you're going to kind of have to get into the weeds with the Ostron. And if you just want a good weapon, you don't really want to care about the Ostron, that may be a little challenging. <coughs> so it's definitely not a day one weapon, or handle. Um, the Quaff... Again, it's got ferrous steel plastids are another one that's going to be kind of a difficult resource to find. Um, I don't remember. I think it comes up in Deimos, but I don't know where Deimos is on the map now because I was already done with the map by the time it got released. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm going to say, just to be safe, it's going to be a little later. Acetus Wisp is kind of a hard thing for a new player to find if you don't know where to look. We can go out and try and find one today. It's especially going to be really hard for a new player if you don't have a K drive or an arc wing to just zip around um, because you have to cover a lot of ground to find where they spawn. They're not very common at all. Uh, the Krustra. Krustra is definitely not day one. Breath of the Eidolon is um, optimistically a thing that you can find on the fifth, the final level, or like the final tier of the bounties for the Ostron, and that's like levels 40 to 60 enemies. And if you're trying to use that to make a saw, you're basically defeating the point. Um, again, Fair Steel, we're probably not going to have access to that day one. And then circuits come from, I want to say it's either Mercury or it's somewhere later on. I'm just going to hazard to say that may not be accessible quite yet. It might be. But that Breath of the Eidolon is definitely going to sink it. I don't expect a new player to be able to find that thing. You'd either have to be doing the highest level bounties, or you'd have to be doing um, terror lists, which I don't believe new players should try and do. Uh, it can be... Frustrating for the whole team at best, catastrophic at worst, and until you actually go and do, I think it's the second dream, you can't really participate. So, unfortunately, that might be locked out for players in the beginning. Uh, Corb is another one that's accessible. It's just Iridite, Fish Oil, Pradic, and Rubido, so that one's definitely a possibility. Uh, the Stung uh, is another one. Again, Grokdual Fish Scales is another thing that we can get from uh, Carving Up Fish. Uh, pyrotic and ferrite. Ferrite's the other resource on Earth that you're going to have a million billion of. I have close to a million. Um, Bala is again tier azurite and pyrotic are the first um, minerals that you have going to have access to. So this is going to be one of the blades you're going to be able to have access to first. As you can see, I just made one. Ulaf or Ultha is again basically the same thing. Um, you're going to start seeing some repetition with some of these minerals now, or some of these resources. Iridite we can get, fish scales we can get, tirazite, and pyrotic we can get. Uh, unfortunately, that's all. That's the with the only two blades we can really use. Um, Escher Devar and Copyright uh, we're not going to have access to. Uh, Marquise Veridos is again another one we're not going to have access to first day. Uh, yep, same thing. Another Breath of the Eidolon, which is sad because I really like the scythe. Um, Copyright sinks that one. Escher Devar and Fair Steel sinks that one. And Marquise Verados. Okay, so we basically have access to the Pei, Pei, I don't know how you pronounce that, the Corb, and the Stung. Uh, for whatever reason, on my, like, fevered typings last night, I changed that to Skun. I don't know. Um, I'm going to keep it wherever I feel like it, because I don't know. And then our first two um, links, we actually have access to, I'm going to say early on. So these are going to look like resources that you can't get. You might freak out and say, oh my gosh, I need a Kuwaka Spinal Claw. Where do I find that? Or a Mawfish Bone. Mawfish Bones come from fishing mawfish. Mawfish are like the most common fish in the lake. 
I'll show you where to find that. And then Kuwaka Spinal Claw, so there's animals that run around the plains now, um, and you can kill them to get their pieces. The Kuwaka are the little ugly rabbit fellas, and then the Chondrox are just the birds. Uh, the Cut Cut Venom Sack is, again, this is a fish that shows up in the ponds, not the lake, but the ponds. I'll show you where to find those. And they're super easy to get as well. So you're going to need to do some fishing, and you're going to need to do some mining, but you don't need to do the bounties. Everything else you can just gather from just running around the plains, which is what I'm about to do. Okay, so let's go talk to Old Man Sumat, and you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Sumat. I love this guy. Um, okay, so here's the first things, and unfortunately, again, you can't see what I'm seeing, but the only things that you have access to at the very beginning are these three here. You get the cutter, or you can get the cutter for 500, the TR Zerite blueprint for 1,000, and the pyrotic alloy for 20 for 1,000. So all in all, to start mining, and start getting the minerals you need, that's about 2,500 standing. Now, as far as I know, and I think I'm correct, rank zero, you can have up to 5,000, and then a daily cap of 16,000. You only need 6,000, I believe, total for all of this, maybe 7,000 if you want to spend some more on some bait and some iridescent uh, for ink for fishing. Um, I'm not going to say you have to, uh, but you should, hypothetically, be able to get this done in a day. Um, and let's talk briefly about what I mean when I say daily standing. So here we have two things. You can see that my standing, I have a maximum standing of 132,000. This means that I can give the Ostron everything I need to to um, up until I have 132,000 and then I'm not going to get any more standing from them until I start spending some. It's kind of like a bank almost, right? You're never going to see this money, you're never going to see these digits, but it's essentially a different form of currency. So if I give him some well, let's give him some Veridos, give seven, you'll see that I'm going to get 525. Now if I give a bunch of gems, you can see I'm up to 1,025, I'm up to 1,525, and you, you can kind of see this goes pretty fast. Uh, and this is where I say you don't need to do bounties. You don't need to use bounties to get that standing. You can just do, um, you can mine and you can fish. It's not the fastest way of doing it, but look at that, we're already like two-thirds of the way to um, where I need to go. So I'm going to cash this in and redeem it. Now I want you to notice the daily standing cap. I have 26,500 remaining. Let me go back and look. We got some standing. It's gone down. Now I have 21,925. At rank 0, you're going to have 16,000. Every rank brings it up by 500, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So you can fill, basically you can give them everything they need to 5,000, which again is not a lot. That's not a lot of mining right there. I've been, every once in a while when I have to go out and do something on the plains, I'll also go and bring my cutter and I'll mine a little bit and come back and give it in. Um, or I'll go fishing or something silly like that. Um, and you can make that pretty easy. And we're gonna kind of we're gonna see exactly how fast we can do that here um, later on. Um, but that's how the standing system works. So you should be able to get this done within the first day, unless I'm horribly wrong and it's actually like 2,000 the first time, and then you know your numbers are super low. It might take a day or two. Okay. So anyway, so 2,500 for Sumbat to get the things you need. Now she has three fishing spears. Uh, I'm not entirely, I don't really remember, I could even look this up while we're just sitting here. Um, certain fishing spears are going to do better for certain things for certain fish. Um, and fish have different classifications. So 
The Lanzo is good for smooth skin fish. Um, armored fish is for the Tulak, and then Perm is for the scaled fish. Um, the Mawfish, for the Mawfish bone, is considered... I don't actually think you need a particular one. Yeah, I, any I think any of these are fine, but the cut cut <coughs> is also fine. Okay, so these are the first common types of fish. I just I don't think it's really gonna matter which spear you need, but you need to get a spear for 500. Um, now this kind of stinks. I don't think you can buy the blueprints anymore. You used to be able to. Now you just have to buy the actual products. So. Um, luminous dyes will illuminate the fish so that you can see them easier and actually catch them and then pepper bait just kind of makes more fish spawn uh, so I would say take a handful of these they both last a couple minutes that should be more than enough time for you to gather some fish um, and then like before so if you cut fish I don't know if you have oh we do have some fish to cut um, you can cut oh wait these might be not mine so you can cut fish and you will get the parts in the fish so you can see how much fish oil and fish scales we get and then we can also provide fish for standing and you can see we can kinda get quite a bit of standing from this right like look at that that's <coughs> 12 fish and that's more standing than we could ever hope to need and if we provide it our daily max standing has gone down. See that? Now we're at 1380. Or 1800. Uh, so you're going to need a fishing uh, spear and a cutter and the two blueprints for the minerals. And that's basically it. Um, all said and done, let's say you put in a thousand for. Uh, some bait and some iridescent dye. 1500, so about 4000 for setup. And then 3000 for the actual parts themselves. That's about 7000 standing. That's pretty doable in the first day. So we're going to go and kind of dick around on the planes really fast, and I can show you where things are. Oh, and you know what? Here. We're also going to swap out, because I want to talk about what spear, what Zaws to use here. So we're actually not going to use that one first. We're going to take this guy. <coughs> I hope my Chocolate Ivera Prime is not uh, too distracting. I like this color setup, and she's a very pretty frame. I love her jellyfish stuff, which is why I turned her this dark, so I could get the iridescent stuff to really pop out. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. So we're going to be looking for a few things. Uh, you saw where we can get fish oil and fish scales, so we need more about that. I'll show you where to find Azurite and Pyrotic. And then some of the other pieces we might need, particularly the chondrikes. Those are the other things we're really looking for. Oh, I remember now. Um, Ivara Prime's become one of my favorites. She's honestly the... Um, she's basically the only frame I can actually do iron path or steel path with right now. Um, so yeah. I should have brought the cutter. Okay, so... We didn't bring the cutter, but this is another... No, you know, hold on. Well, we're going to actually go and get the cutter so you can see what I see. The cutters are really nice because they also have a little radar to tell you when you're looking for uh, a mining spot. But if you've never seen a mining spot before, I'll show you where to find those. Um, and then show you where the, the fishies are at, too. And I'm going to say that you shouldn't need... Uh, you should not need a K-Drive 
or an arc wing launcher for this. Uh, most of this stuff you can gather at the immediate vicinity of the uh, of the gate to the planes or the gate to Cetus. All right, so yeah, we're just gonna put it right here. There's my mouse and cutter. Nah, that's the focused one. Let's just get the regular guy. There he is. Plain Jane Dawson Cutter. Oh, okay, fine. We do have to put it with at some point. Sheesh. You can take every fishing spear, but you can't take two Nassim Cutter or two drills. That's weird. There he is. Okay, so our regular Nassim Cutter. And I thought I already had a spear. Yeah, we've got a Lanzo fishing spear, so we're all set now. We've already got some bait. We're good to go. I guess if I finish this up, or I don't know how long I've been streaming for, but I can also, we can do some, um, I can show off the steel path and how it's super doable with Avara. Well, that's super doable. It's feasible, I guess. Depending on how you want to define it. Okay. So here we are on the planes. Let's go ahead and get our cutter out first. We'll talk about this guy. So there's a few things to look at. If you hit up on the D-pad while you're in the overload, you're going to open up your map kind of hard to see. If you hit it again, or if you hold it down, you actually pull up the whole map, and not only can you zoom it around, you can look around the map, too. You can hit waypoints, like that, so you can give yourself some reference points. Um, let's see. So we can see these little mountains here. Mountains are where um, minerals are going to spawn naturally, or mineral hard points. Uh, we can see all that blue, so there's the Garak Tot Lake, that's where the big lake is where we can get mawfish, right? Down here is the ocean, or the sea, it's got its own particular biome of fish, and then these smaller guys are considered the ponds, so this is where you're going to be able to find the cut cuts, right? Basically anything smaller than the lake. Uh, so we can see, I think that one's too small to actually fish from, but these three should be pretty good. Okay. Now, if you get near, and this might actually be a different... Yeah, it might be later, I might be spoiled here, but you can actually find some places to mine. Oh, okay, it is telling us. So you can hear that annoying beeping. You're going to love that in your time in Warframe. Uh, it's telling us that there is a mining point right here. This is a vein to mine from. And just like that, we got some Veridos. We can't use the Veridos. Uh, that's Iridite. Again, it just naturally pops up on the uh, on the overworld. It is everywhere. You don't need to worry about it. Um, just keep wandering around and you'll find plenty. Uh, now, there are little spawn points for the wildlife that you're going to want to pay attention to. Yep, there's a Chondrak right there. Or a Kuka, and then we got a Spinal Claw, as you can see. Kind of sucks, but they're ugly little pig rabbits, so I don't really feel any sympathy towards them. So it's just a large part of kind of wandering around. As a new player on the plains, you're going to want to kind of keep away from Grenier. They can vary from like 10 to 30, and the Tusk Grenier can be pretty tough customers. They like to call in reinforcements on you, um, and there are definitely more advanced types of Grenier. There's some Azurite we need. Um, there are some different kinds of Grenier that don't pop up on Earth, or on most um, places on Earth. That guy is always a pain in the ass. I'm gonna say if you don't have, if you like, if you took the Paris in the beginning, don't even bother trying to hit these guys. They're a real pain in the dick um, to shoot down, and they'll just bother you the entire time. Like so. So we're just gonna ignore him. Um, 
Now you can probably I would I would say it's a good idea to invest later on in a uh, focused cutter or an advanced cutter um, because they are uh, they'll give you a little radar signature. I believe I've streamed that before. I've done enough um, streams where at some point or another it's shown up on my thing. It'll basically give you a little rock symbol on your um, mini map. <laughs> Telling you, uh, so I'm getting distracted by a guy. There we go. Got him. And he dropped some Rupert Dough. Look at that. What a nice guy. Um, so there is like, like right here, there are just some places if you see an exposed rock, odds are you're going to have a good chance of finding a vein. Um, red ones are for um, like metals and alloys. Blue ones I believe are gems. Yeah, ore. That's right. So red is ore, blue is gems. And the azurite is a gem and the pyrotic is an ore. Um, I've already blanked on what we just picked up. I think it was some copyright, if I'm not mistaken. There's one over here. There's a few area, early areas over here where the animals will spawn. But if you're not having any luck finding any on the overworld, um, we can go over here and we're actually going to set a waypoint to the Twin Horns. Um, oh, there's another one. There we go. Come here, boy. Yeah, there we go. We got some Iridite, and we got the last claw we would need uh, if we were trying to make a uh, one of the links. Alright, so this is what you have to be careful. Number one, you can find these guys on the ground, but this thing is actually calling in reinforcements. So it's an automated little drone, and it's going to be shooting out these smoke signals over here, these smoke uh, grenades. And that smoke grenade is going to call in a bigger craft, which will then either either a craft is going to come in and drop some troops off and they're going to look for you or they're going to uh, shoot some guys in uh, in I guess artillery shells is what how you could call it I don't even see where this guy is oh, yep yeah, there comes some and he dropped another one so you're going to want to get rid of these pretty fast because it's already shot a smoke grenade off and now you can see I have a situation the nice thing if you get far enough away from where all this is going on I don't even see like this is the other problem so it's kinda hard to see what's going on here right This area is okay because you're kind of in the early area, but these are big guys. Um, if you don't know how to mod your weapon properly, which if you've seen my other tutorial video, uh, that kind of should give you everything you need to know about it. Um, but these guys can be pretty tough, and you can still hear every time I run into a new batch, they're sending out a new um, smoke grenade, or a new uh, alarm system which is then calling in more and it just kind of continues to escalate so if this is happening to you I would recommend um, if you run off if you get far enough away from them they will eventually begin to de-escalate You can actually fly those, by the way. There's a uh, there's an achievement for flying those for so long. Uh, yeah, you can see they just keep coming. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Let's go in here to our mine shaft. So if you're really having a hard time finding all the minerals you need, uh, I believe the entrance is right here. 
you can see there's already two right here just on the mouth of the cave there's some copper and we don't need there we go so if you just keep mining um, you're eventually you're gonna accrue a whole bunch of minerals you can't quite use yet and that's okay it's not a huge deal. Now this place can get pretty tricky. Um, I recommend taking it slow, trying to remember where you can get out because you can get lost in here if you're not really paying attention. Um, the nice thing, there's a few little cues that you can look for. Um, cables will tell you the right way to go, the yellow cables on the ground. Um, That container right there we see is Grokdrill, um, which DE claims is not actually a beverage that the Grenier eat. I say otherwise, but you know, whatever. Okay, there's some more pyro. That's to make pyrotic alloy. Um, and this is where most people begin to get lost. So you see these cables on the wall here? They go straight down as long as you're following those you should be okay you can also follow the panels back up and then you can just see all the minerals down here so there's this ledge right here now the nice thing about gems even if you have a bunch that you don't need yet or you can't make I'm just gonna kinda shoot willy-nilly because that's a really bad spot for one to spawn in um, you can still trade them in for standing, which is great. Because again, you don't need to do any bounties to actually rank up with the Ostrom. You can just give them fish and you can give them uh, gems, and you should get all the standing you would ever need from them. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to have to try this sometime of just starting from scratch and then going straight to the plains, never doing any bounties, just mining, and see how long it takes me to get there to uh, rank 5. You are going to want to be careful down here. Uh, beyond getting lost, the Greener also has some fortifications, and I believe they're at a slightly higher level, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they've got some miniguns, some turrets set up down here, and they will murder you if you just stand there and let them shoot at you, so this is not the place that you want to just, like, zone out. Now, as far as mining drills go, uh, so we have it out right now, and it's kind of, it's, it's acting in place as our pistol, right? Um, so we can't use our gun. We can use our melee. So if we do this. You can see that we have our melee out. And then we go back to our laser. Now if you want to use your other guns, you have to hit triangle. And it's going to take out your pistol. But it's not going to cycle back to your mining laser. You have to go back into your wheel to get that. So if that's kind of a pain in the butt, you can just strictly use your, um, just use your, your melee and you should be good. Whoop, that's a pit. Okay, so if you get deeper in here, you notice this yellow wire. This basically leads you back out to the entrance. So yeah, we've got one turret there. There's another turret back there. You can see it's level 16, so this can definitely, uh, be a problem, as can that guy. That's Adjudicator. These things are armored on the front, and you can see there's another one right there. So there's two of these guys already right off the bat. You can see I'm really, even I'm getting hit pretty bad here. Uh, there's a heli in some down, somewhere down here. There he is. I don't know what the logic is of using a jetpack in a cave, but hey, whatever. Here he comes. Um. So you're going to want to be careful down here. There's a few other caves where I don't believe they're as bad. 
um, or as dangerous as this one, but this one's really close to the beginning, so I normally kind of default to it. So you get back here, you get this kind of destroyed thing. Remember to go up. Okay, just go back up the path. And I, I'm not saying all this to be patronized, I'm saying all this because I've gotten lost down here, and I know people have gotten lost and just quit and lost everything they picked up. And then here's the path back up. You just have to get back on the ruined scaffolding and take it back up to the exit. Not a big deal. Okay, so that's where you can find minerals, and we've already gotten some of it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what you need, particularly the pirate. The azurite is not a big deal to make. It's just like a thousand credits, and uh, you need one azurite each for the set of ten, so you need ten azurite in total. Um, let's see. Let's go to. Let's try this lake. Um. But the pyrite, you're actually going to need some more rubido and some more cryotic, which will probably take a little more time. It's going to require you to go do an excavation. Not, they're not too quick. They don't take a whole lot of time, but it is something else you're going to have to do. So again, we've got another gem right here. Where's my cutter? There it is. We're just going to grab those. Now, you might have seen as we're coming into this lake, there's a bubbling spot. That's actually a hot spot. So these fish have some hot, hot spots going on, which means there's particularly a few more rare ones we could find, but we're not worried about the rare ones today. We're worried about the regular plain Jane ones. So we equipped our fishing spear, and again, this works the exact same way whoops, uh, as our uh, laser. I think that does a thumper. Oh, boy. We're going to ignore him. He's a pain. These things are also kind of a pain in the butt. I do not recommend you try and fight one early on. That one's level 19, and I believe he's one of the smaller boys. Uh, they take a while. They're kind of a pain in the ass to fight. If you manage to kill one, they have a lot of fish parts, um, which is cool if you don't want to fish. I, I don't know why. So in the daytime, you can kind of see. So this is a cut cut right there. Or no, that's a lungfish. I'm sorry. Um, so you can kind of see... It's easy to see in the daytime, but not as easy as it could have been. Excuse me, sir. Where are you going to see? I don't know. Um, he's going to piss me off. He's over there. <laughs> he's going to piss me off. Um, there we go. Go away. I'm fishing. It's not as easy to see. It's kind of hard to see, actually. So, you know, fucking, we're gonna go to a different lake. We're not gonna borrow this asshole. We're gonna go to a different lake. Let me go up here. And we ran into a patrol, because everybody... There's lots of lines of elevation, uh, which means it's really easy to just run into another group of Grenier. Um, and then we've got the aerial guy. So you can kind of see how this can get pretty aggravating. I don't remember enjoying particularly being on the planes uh, when I was first started out. That's not something I was really too happy about. Um, it wasn't until I was a lot more comfortable with the game that I finally got around to it. Okay, so I think this is a fine pond to use. Okay. So we've got our fishing spirit. You can kind of see there's three options. It says hold R1 for action, much like our ability. So we can throw some die, and the die will eliminate all the fish. And then we can throw some pepper bait, and that will cause more fish to spawn. And then, so long as the grenier aren't going to bother you, there's a cut cut right there that we need. You can just sit here and fish to your heart's content. It's pretty relaxing. I really, this has always been one of the parts of the game I like. Which is kind of weird, you know, because it's a game about intergalactic ninja things. Um, but you know, it's relaxing when the grenier aren't being complete dicks. So there's a few various kinds of fish that come out. 
Um, you can get different kinds of baits to get different kinds to spawn. Uh, some are more common. It's, it's a typical fishing mechanic, you know. There's going to be rare fish, there's going to be common fish, there's going to be different ways to get the fish. Um, I think this was the first, this was the first fishing mechanic implemented in the game, so it's pretty basic. Um, the other one, the Fortuna one has a much more, like, there's a time, a quick time event mechanic added onto it, which is fine. I don't really care about it. Um, but it's not very engaging. You're mostly just trying to hit the fish, which in itself can be kind of dick, pain in the ass. Another cut, cut. So you can even see, like, we've basically, we probably have more than enough we need um, for our link. Uh, and then everything else you get, you can trade in for standing. Uh, don't go in the water. You can see that it'll cause me to uh, to respawn, like falling into a pit. And you can also get a mechanic, or not a mechanic, a, ma a magnetic debuff, which will actually drain your energy. So you want to be careful with that. You kind of want to lead because there's a bit of a travel time for some damn reason. I don't know. Yeah, okay. So that's basically where you can go fish. Um, and now we'll just go take a quick trip to the lake. Um, to kind of show that off. That's a troop transport. I don't think this is much of anything yet. It's a nothing. So this is the lake. Uh, there's a whole bunch of places you could go. Um, it's going to be the most memorable place that you can find. And there's a mawfish. Right off the bat. Super easy to find. Not hard at all. Bunch of eels. Bunch of other crap. So yeah, not a bad way to spend an afternoon at all. You should be able to get everything you need within an hour or less, I would even say within a couple minutes. Um, just make sure you don't get host migrated or die too many times or you'll lose everything, which kind of sucks for gathering. But yeah, okay. So that's enough of that. I'm going to be here all day if I just keep... I'm yeah, got to stop. Got to stop. Fuck. Otherwise I'll be here all day. And it's about to be night time. As a new player, you don't want to be out at night. There is enemies that will spawn that will, like, they hurt you quite a bit. Um, there's big bosses that roam the overworld. Um, just miss every shot. Oh, I forgot to show off. <laughs> uh, Mapico and Rubido. Um, missile pods. So, Mapico is a tree, or actually a bush, that you're going to find spawning. Um, much like the Iridite. Uh, it's a little less, I think I see one over it. It's a little less common, but still pretty easy to run into. You just have to walk around for a little bit and find some. Yep, there's some right here. And that's all we needed. Nissle pods are actually on the other side over here. Um, to get across this body of water as a new player, it's too far to jump, but you can go down here and it actually just kind of peters out. And then up on this hill, um, not only is it going to be some tougher enemies, but this is where the Nissle pods are at. So we'll see if we can't run into some here in a minute. I would say just keep moving as much as you can for gathering this stuff. Um, don't worry too much about engaging the Grenier. Um, the more you move out here, the safer you'll be. Uh, unless you have these stupid things chasing you. I have died to those as a new player, I'll tell you that right now. I might need to go off the ridge a little bit more. more of them chasing, which is fantastic. The overworld can be, seem kind of big. Um, that over there is our exit, 730 meters away. Um, 
I definitely have gotten lost out here in the past. This trick right here will save you so much time. The fact that you can set your own waypoints from the map and move the map around to see where you are is a huge godsend. Um, you can also start bounties from out here if you want to. Just click on this. This is helpful for if you're doing um, the Nightwave missions. I hear another little thing. Where is he? Oh, there he is. There we go. Got another one. But we should try again. You can actually catch those. Okay, so this is a Nissel pod right here. Uh, and one of them will give you 10, which should be enough. You don't need to find me. I guess they're around bodies of water. That might be the thing you're looking for. Some bodies of water up on the hills. Um, yeah. So that's basically every resource you need to find in order to make your Zaw. Uh, none of them are too far away. I think Nissel Pods are probably the furthest thing you're going to have to go out and find, but everything else should be fairly quick and easy to get. And right here at the start. As I was saying, don't stay out at night. There's some enemies that you can't kill as a new player. There are some roaming bosses which will stomp you. Don't try and gather things at night. Um, it's a little more dangerous. I really like this bomber. So let's start talking about the choices that we do have access to. So you've basically got access to two blades, three handles, and two links. And that's going to make um, several different kinds of Zaws. Uh, you can play around with it to your heart's content. I'm going to show you the one I made. We're actually going to leave here because I don't feel like messing with the equipment screen. On Cetus is always a pain in the ass. <coughs> Um, let me show you the Zaw I've made here. And I think this is the one, personally, that's going to be the one that is most useful for you as a new player. Give me just one second. So we made one, just kind of as a demonstration. Um, this is the Bala, or, and it should be okay. Honestly, as far as I'm concerned, any weapon, any Zaw that you make will be slightly superior to uh, any regular melee weapon because of all the accessibility it has um, and all the different stat bonuses and everything. But the... Uh, there's a few things that make a few different kinds a little bit better. So this is a dagger. We didn't even up, uh, put any mods on it yet. Um, and you would need to make this really work. You need to find one of these stances. Um, I believe homing fang is a pretty common one. I don't remember exactly where it comes up, but you're not going to get the most out of it. You'd really want pointing wind or stinging thorn, right? And those aren't things you're going to find immediately, right off the bat. Um, you do have access to an immediate... Um, oh, hold on here.
Uh, anyway, okay. So as I was saying, uh, you're not probably going to find, unless you're really lucky, you're not going to find a stance that really works with your dagger right off the bat. Um, but there is a stance mod you do have access to, and it's right on Earth. It's on the Venus Junction. So if you go and do the Venus Junction, which is a pain to look at because of my stupid lich. Okay. So you can see the rewards here are scrolling by, and you're going to get one right there. And that's actually a stance mod for a staff. And staffs we can make with a Zaw. So let me show you the Zaw I've made here and exactly how I've outfitted it and why we've picked it. And that's this guy here. This is uh, the Ultha, the Stuck, and the Ruhang um, put together. And I've picked these because you get Clashing Forest, and not only do you get Clashing Forest, it's a compatible um, polarity for your stance. Meaning you're going to get the most bang for your buck. So at rank 0, as an unranked mod, you're going to get, or an unranked Zaw, you're going to get 31 um, capacity, which is far better than 10 or whatever you get, 15, something like that. Terrific. All right, hold on a second. So you can see already, um, let's talk about some things with this. So the first thing to know is that this particular one I've made is very, very slow. The Ultha is a pretty slow blade. Um, nothing really that you're going to make with it. It's going to be particularly fast. Not like the Bala, which is a very fast blade. Uh, and the Stuck is also a pretty slow stave pole handle, whatever. Um, and the Ruhang sacrifices speed for damage, so you put all those three together, and you get a remarkably slow Zaw. And we're actually going to go test this out in Simulacrum here in a second. That's where we're going next. And that can seem kind of disconcerting uh, if you only had access to your standard attack right um, you don't so we have some other things at our disposal do, 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 do. Today, Junior. There we go. I love three frames per second. Okay. So we're going to go to Cephalon Samaris. We're going to go into the Simulacrum. You have to buy this, by the way, I think. Which is the easier one. And we're going to take a look at the Zaw and what they can do. So first, we're going to take a look at the Bala. This is like the most basic of the Zaws you can make. No, not that. This is the most basic knife you can make with a Zaw. And, let's get rid of those. So it's got a, an attack speed of 1.08, which is pretty fast. Um, you can see that here. That's 108, or 1.08. Not bad in the slightest, right? But the difficulty here is that we kind of are a little bit slow uh, 
are a little bit low on damage. So if we make uh, any kind of enemy that's of uh, any decent size, like say 135, it's going to take us a while to chew through them, right? So let's just go and try and take our brand new Zaw that's like rank 3 and we're going to stab this gunner to death. You can see it's kind of taking a while, right? We're applying some slash procs somehow and that's kind of taking the damage. Now here's the nice thing about melee weapons is that's not our only option, right? We can't just rely on status procs. You also have a heavy attack, which does virtually nothing. Uh, there is a sliding attack, so if you bullet jump while hitting melee, you can slide like so. You can ground pound, so if you jump up, look down, you can smash like that. And if you do that again, and instead of hitting circle, hit your heavy attack, you actually can cause them to float, which opens them up to a few more attacks. And then finally you have your stealth attack, which again did very little. So we can see how there's kind of a difference here yeah, we can hit fast with this thing, but we're not doing much, right? So let's go check out the Ultha next. Of course, these are both unmodded. Let me uh, take out the other one unmodded, too. We can kind of look at the differences here. First off, that's a slow follow-up, right? But you can kind of see we just did something there. I believe this stance we have on it will cause them to float automatically. And you can see we're actually doing a little bit more damage. Well, we probably are because I modded it and forgot. Um, So that's not the full power of slow. Alright. So let's give it the full power of slow. You can see there is a definite difference here, right? So That may seem like a problem. And if that is a problem to you, you might want to go with the Bala and the Jai over uh, the Ultha and Rutan, like I did. But honestly, if that was the only trick in the box, I would say, yeah, attack speed might matter more. But you've got your roll, your sliding attack, you've got your ground pound, you've got your heavy attacks. And the windup is, I think, basically all the same for all of these, if not like a tenth of a second difference. So that's why I went with the uh, the kind of slower, more damage inducing. This ignore this. I'm just enjoying being able to hit square. Um, let's talk about why we want the Ultha over the Bala, and it's going to be a bit paradoxical based on those status procs we just saw. So the Ultha as you can see is doing 10.4 impact 124.8 puncture and 72.8 slash for a total of 208 All right, most of that's going to be puncture so that's good for Grenier you're going to be chewing through their armor more not very good for infested or um, when corpus have shields up um, there, I'm I'm certainly an advocate for puncture damage, but slash damage I feel like is a little more just superior because of the procs it can do. 
Um, and you can see here again if I just get rid of this crap. Um, you can see here not only is the Ultha doing about 50 damage more, uh, it's also doing a majority of slash over puncture. Maybe if I'm not mistaken, let's go back and look at that again. It's doing really close to similar puncture damage anyway, so you're really just kind of getting more bang for your buck with the Ultha. Um, now, yes, yeah, so you could see that was remarkably slow. Um, the attack speed only affects your regular attacks. It doesn't affect how fast your slide does, or your slam, or your charge at follow-up. So you have more than one thing to do here. There's, you're not limited solely um, to one... You, you're not as limited as you think. And you can also mitigate this pretty well if you have something like Fury. Fury re uh, increases your attack speed. And we've already, already seen that already, so let me put the stance on here. There we go. You can already see that's a little bit better, right? Oh, I forgot you have your guards attack, you have your rolling attacks. Roll right off the platform attacks. Just like so on and so forth. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty neat. So yeah, there's a lot going on here. Um, so don't feel like attack speed has to be super high. You can get it higher. There is more than one mod to kind of build that back up. Um, and the damage that you're getting, I believe, is a fair trade-off. Um, so yeah, this is the this is the Zaw that I would recommend going with. So that's again the Ultha, the Stuck, and the Ruha, or the Ruhang. You can also you can swap out the Ruhang for the Jai, and it's probably gonna be a lot faster. Um, yeah, so here's what's going to happen next. I'm going to go ahead and give this, excuse me, a pressure point. So this is how I feel would be the best combination um, for your first Zaw. I'm going to say, so you're going to get these guys fairly quick. These are the 90 mods. These are just straight damage, 90% um, toxin. So that's going to apply to your total. You're going to want to do these over something like Buzzkill, where it's going to give you more Slash, but it's only going to apply to Slash. Oh my goodness. Okay. Piece of shit. There. Uh, whereas these elementals, so if we put on Molten Impact, it's going to give us 90% of the total. So you can see we have uh, the total went from 250 to 1000. So you have right off the bat, we can even put on some smaller things here. We have enough for like, uh, we can do, if you want to do parry for a counter chance, I don't know why that would be. Reflex Quo, I think Reflex Quo will probably be it's a fairly early one and I think it'd probably be best so this actually when you're building up combo uh, this will help in the amount of uh, of your combo meter the heavy attacks remove so if you like to use your heavy attacks I still haven't bound I found a way I like to bind them yet uh, this will be a quick and easy way to make sure you can do more. So yeah, um, now let's take this. We're not going to do a level 120 enemy. We're actually going to take. Let's do. Um, let's do level 50. No, level 60. 
Level 60 is the highest that the bounties go on any of the overworlds. Uh, so you're not going to see anything really past this point. Uh, there we go. Let's do an Ancient Healer. These guys are kind of a pain in the ass. These guys can really be a pain in the ass, actually. So we have our unranked uh, weapon. Our unranked Zaw. It's got about a thousand total damage right now and an attack speed of, um, I think 0.7. Something to indicate with this stance. You're going to want to try and get familiar with your stances because they kind of change how your weapon works. Um, it looks like this one, the combo works a lot better if you are moving. Whereas if you're standing still, you're doing this weird stuff. So yeah. Alright, so level 60. Gone. Just like that. That's about as high as the star chart gets before you get to the steel path. Um, unless, of course, you're doing endless missions where, yeah, you're going to have higher things spawn. Uh, let's do a... Let's do a Bombard. you can see, actually doable, right? This saw at its base, like at unranked, ungilded, the lowest rank it can go. Let's clear all that. Let's do a corrected gunner. Uh, yeah, corrupted gunner. One of you. Let's take a brood mother. Uh, where's the mechanic? A corpus tech. Here we go. Let's do the three basic big boy types of enemies here. So brood mother, not a big deal. That slash damage is just destroying her, right? When you knock an enemy down, you should be also be able to open up a gun, a uh, finisher. Okay, Corpus Tech, big boy with big meaty armor. Once it shields a gun, so is he. Like that. Heavy Gunner. This is probably this is the one we like to use the most because she's got the most armor. And you can see she's still pretty tough, but we can make it through. Again, sometimes it takes a little, uh, little ingenuity. Ingenuity. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's turn her on and see how it goes. So we're going to turn the AI off, going to turn the invisibility off, going to clear that, and just take the corrupted gunner. And see how we do against her. So this is a level 60 Corrupted Gunner. Give her some space. Back back out here. Try and get her off. The, I don't want her to fall off the ledge. That's kind of cheap. This is just the Zara. Right no abilities. No other weapons. Mercy. 
Something you can do pretty quick. And she's gone. Is it fast? Is it the fastest? Probably not. Can you build this all and go right to Mott? To the very end of the star chart? Probably. Probably. And again, this is unranked. This is ungilded. This is the lowest possible this is all could go. And that's pretty good, in my opinion. One more thing I want to look at before we go off and try and uh, get this bad boy ranked out is I want to look at what another stave could look like. I want to compare an unranked stave to an unranked stave and show why exactly I think this Zaw would be a really good match for a new player. Where'd my coffee go? Did I finish it? I might have finished my coffee. I don't know. Uh, my mouth's getting drier, which means I've been talking too long. Okay, so we're going to go in here in the market. And we're going to look at another Zaw or another stave weapon. Kind of compare the two. Oh, that's, that's Raph. Staff. That's Star. Staff. There. I thought the Tippino was in here too. Maybe I need to do stave. There it is. Okay. So this is the Tippino. Um, it is mastery rank 3 required, so you're probably not going to get this your first day. Um, it's a similar weapon to make it. It costs 20,000 uh, to buy and then 20,000 to make. So, looking about 40,000, you need neuro sensors and polymer bundles, which I don't believe are on Earth. And then you also need to have the kunai and the bow, which you would probably, if you're going to have those, you should probably mastery rank them or rank them up first and master them before you use them to build another weapon. So, this is probably not going to be a first day weapon, but let's look at the uh, look at the damage here. It's pretty fast. It's a lot faster than our Zaw. Um, most of the calculations are pretty comparable. It's a little higher status and crit by 2%, but the damage is a lot lower. So this is why I'm saying uh, the, the Zaw is probably better than anything you're going to get access to early on, because you also don't need to be at any rank to use one. It's a Mastery Rank 0 weapon you can use it from day one, hence why I'm saying day one Zaw, right? And again, with no mods, we're looking at 254 to what I was, 124 or something. Anyway, um, I'm trying to think how long this would take to rank up. Let's go do Hydron. Uh, Hydron, if you don't know, is the fast way to rank things up. Um, I claim this territory in the name of oh, it's on set now. Yours truly. But really fast, let's look at levels. Super fast. So 60 is what you're going to hit. There's 45. I believe. Yeah, from Neptune. No, not even Neptune. Yeah, Mott is pretty much the end all of um, this is the last, the highest point on star chart presently, and it's 40 to 45, so even lower than the level 60 heavy gunner we just did. Um, let's go to Mott. Let's see how she does.
So we're going to do only our Zaw. We're not going to use any other weapons. We're not going to use any abilities. It's just going to be the Zaw. Let me see how we do here. Gone. That was rank one. Gone. This guy. Gone. Level 40 enemies. The highest enemies on the star chart. Gone. 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 Destroyed. Like, I showed this off last time. This will get you through the entire star chart. And I'm dying because I'm an idiot and charging in behind my team. Especially when there's a wisp here. I should not be dying. That is silly of me to do. Heavy gunner. Let's see how this one... Not looking good. And a trick with your Parazon that's a little bit broken. Um, with the really big enemies, you only have to get them down to like a quarter or less health before you can initiate a Mercy. And that's just going to end them even faster. Like, let's Mercy this one here, wherever she is. Yep. Why not? Weird. I think the electric proc canceled it out. And like I said, this is with nothing. This is like three super common mods. You can come and do mod with just a Zaw. Of course, you don't have to like keep your wits about you and not just charge in like an idiot, but yeah, you can absolutely just sit here and carve up enemies all day. Now what I want to do is get this thing ranked up so I can guild it and show you how that works. Because guilding is basically, it's a combination of one, you're unlocking the full potential of Yazaw, you get to name it, you get to customize at that point, um, what are you up to four? And you get to format it, so you get to add a polarity to it and then it's back at rank zero again. Um, but it's basically a free, it's a formalist, um, Jesus Christ. It's a formalist um, polarization. I really should have mercyed him because I'm dying and I'm dead. I lied. We're not going to just use the... Despite how good this all is, it cannot save me from being an idiot. So yeah, don't uh, don't be dumb. Is my my message for today. Yeah, so you can see, does really good against flesh. Oh, I should be in here. This is a bad idea. This was the bad idea. I'm kind of hoping I can finish out the saw with one, one mission. We'll see if I can. I don't know how long these guys want to last in here. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm trying to do something. Just like that. She's gone. Gone, baby, gone. Where'd that other globe go? There it is. Okay. You might be wondering what the hell I'm doing. You'll see in a second. Essentially, you get like a few seconds to try and shoot all the cans up there uh, before that door shuts and you never get them again. Or you can just shoot them through the door and not worry about it. Now 
why I love a fire is you can do stupid stuff like this. And now we're playing on easy mode. Prowl basically just turns the, uh... Just turns enemy A off. They have no idea what to do. And now a quick note for, um... If you're ever gonna do Avara with Steel Path, you can do this. And this Sleeper... ...can be assassinated, like so. this is we disappear and we use an arrow just like that this is also super useful for um, ranking things up is those mercy kills or those assassination kills give you a lot more affinity which means it's a lot quicker to level things up than if you were just uh, the longer you fight the more successful hitting them and killing them in a regular manner. So, Avara is super good. Yeah, see, that's a bombard, and we're just gonna delete him, like that. Now we have that stealth affinity bonus, and we can just keep stacking that on. Like that. Though it looks like we're not getting a very high one. And of course, nullifiers ruin the fun, but it's okay. Heh. <laughs> We're doing good. We are smart peoples. So as usual, my poor planning creates kind of a ballyhoot kind of demonstration, but ultimately you can see the level that I'm killing enemies at with very little effort. Navarra is just a really fun frame. I like her a lot. I'm not sure what that was. And like I was saying, this isn't something I'm saying it's mandatory to do. I'm just saying this will make your life a lot easier to have a weapon that is incredibly powerful very early on, and then you don't ever have to worry about it again. I would also recommend, like, um, you don't have to do the bounties. Um, it would be productive to do the bounties, especially the first three you get Gara's parts, and Gara's a wonderful frame to do as well. Um, I can show her off here in a second, but um, I forget what ability that is. It's not Vitrify, it's the other one. Splinter Shards? Uh, Splinter Shards has an insane amount of damage reduction, uh, and I actually prefer Gara over Nova for damage, just straight damage reduction, because she does it so much better. Uh, and she also has Vitrify, which makes like an instant little fortress that you don't have to worry about. So I recommend put the bigs to sleep. Not only does it make it easy to get rid of them, you're going to get a lot more affinity. Maybe 
you don't get stealth kill bonuses as a cloak? I don't know. Gone and gone. So yeah, this is how I make it through most of the steel path. This cheese. Oh shit, I guess we're done. Why not? Maybe we are done, I don't know. Yeah. I want that Exodus. Okay, fine, I'll go. I'm going, I'm going. Even though if we wait like 10 more seconds, we're going to get another thing. There we go. You now we can leave. So yeah, that's a, a pretty job well apt kind of a thing. Uh, a demonstration for just how the Zaws work, what you can do with them. A boss kill? What the hell is a boss kill? 111 melee kills. So yeah, that is for your consideration. Uh, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm going to go eat some food, uh, enjoy the rest of my afternoon before my family comes home, which should be soon, honestly. And probably do some chores, clean up the house a little bit. I hope this is beneficial for you, uh, if you're watching this in the future. Um, I don't want you to feel intimidated by Cetus or the overworld like I did. Um, it's definitely not as overwhelming as you might think. Give it a try, if you feel like it. Again, I would recommend a staff. It doesn't have to be the Ulta. If you like the Bala, I think the Bala is slightly faster. It would be even better with the Jai if you want a nice speedy weapon. But as you saw, honestly, the attack speed being super high is not that important. Um, there really is very, very little difference between like 0.9 and 1.05 uh, on attack speed. Uh, so don't sweat that too much. Yeah, I hope you found this beneficial. Um, I might make some more as I come across things. This was just kind of an ad hoc thing. Uh, for that spreadsheet I made, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I might put a link in a description at a certain point to it. I might make some photos of it and put them in an Inger thread or something. I don't know. Uh, if there's a lot of data in that... Um, that kind of backs up everything I'm saying here, but I just don't know where to put it. I'll keep thinking on that and how I can share it with you all. Uh, and yeah, have a great afternoon.